Hello there, as we Sean. This is uh, the Doodle, the Doolittle, excuse me. Um, and you had messaged me about asking what uh, I thought about my coping skills as compared to a normative Aspie. Uh, I actually started writing something and then I uh, got busy over the weekend and I didn't get a chance to do it and it didn't save, so I didn't get a chance to send it to you. Uh, so I decided, okay, why not just go ahead and, and we'll do a video and I can hand you the video and you can post it or I can post it on my web page or my YouTube account and you can post it and send a link from yours. Um, the question you asked is uh, what were the coping skills what are the coping skills that separates mine from the normative Aspie and I'm not entirely sure what your definition of the normative Aspie is. I assume you mean someone who's been able to get into society and being able to interact with society well enough and um, my coping skills uh, my, I, I had a very interesting time growing up uh, I was uh, quite a loner as a child I didn't have very many friends um, what I did have uh, was uh, a lot of technical know-how my father came back from Vietnam with a lot of radio equipment, electronic equipment type stuff like that. So I grew up with that uh, kind of mentality of being able to handle electronics and reading schematics. Uh, actually at five years old I built my first computer. Um, built a, an Altair 8080. Uh, it was a binary machine. You had to learn how to program in binary. So I was counting in binary by the time I was five. I was doing hexadecimal by the time I was six. Uh, in fact I was actually solving college level algebra by the time I was in the fifth grade. I was always hyper intelligent compared to a lot of other people, in many cases even more than my teachers. And so I tended to get, you know, isolated quite a bit. Um, I was very uncoordinated as a kid, so I didn't really do well in sports. Um, I was on the chess team. I was a state champion at one point uh, in middle school. Uh, growing up, just didn't have a lot of children my age that I could deal with and I tended to talk to people who were much older than I was. I was in the computer clubs uh, so I talked to guys who were you know, oh, you know 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years older than I was. Um, and a lot of these guys computer sciences, these guys have been around since the, the, the early days and here it was this you know genius kid coming in and being able to <laughs> outdo them on programming in some cases. Um, because of that, I mean, I grew up uh, really with computers in mind. I was always a very analytical type person, very technical. And about 1984 was when I got my first modem, and we actually had uh, s several bulletin boards here in Houston. So I called up uh, bulletin boards, and we actually made friendships that way. Uh, some of the doll net inter inter stuff, uh, FidoNet came, you know, I think, five or six years later, and I was always involved with uh, those networks and being able to send messages back and forth, had several pen pals, uh, talked to people you know, uh, who had a lot of the same interests that I had. Because around me, uh, growing up in kind of the, at the time, the suburbs of, of Houston, um, it was, uh, you know, I didn't have very many friends. I didn't have many people who could communicate with me on the level that some of these other people did. So, growing up uh, with uh, bulletin board systems, uh, that whole non-verbal non communication never really came into play. Everything was, was typed out. Everything I had to read, I had to type out. Uh, if we did have emotions that we want to do, we, you know, invented the emoticons. And so a lot of the people, you know, I remember the first time in around 1985, 86 is when I first learned about them. Uh, so, you know, just jumping up and down and from joy, it's like, hey, we can play with this and make cute little smiley faces. And there was all these different t things to play with and create and, and be able to tell jokes and be able to be sarcastic. Um... Because of that, it was uh, I didn't have that option, or I didn't have the the, the problems dealing with uh, nonverbal communication. Uh, when I got into high school, that changed a little bit. I, I actually joined ROTC, uh, and being in the military yourself, you kind of understand that there's that whole top-down communication standard and uh, the structure, the hierarchical structure of a command structure. Um, and because of that, uh, it changed me up a little bit. Uh, I did try out for the uh, short, uh, marksmanship team, 
and I was actually very good. I used to average a 298 out of 300, and I was the worst guy on the team. Uh, we went to many competitions, won many, many awards, uh, so it boosted my ego quite a bit. But even then, everything being very military, very structured, we still didn't have a whole lot of that uh, nonverbal communication. So I didn't really uh, cope well when I did have problems, when I got out of RTC. It was very, very difficult for me. I, uh, um, I had joined the computer club. Uh, I had gotten into a computer magnetic, pro magnetic program, uh, which means they shipped me across town to uh, another school and work on computers all day long, and I very quickly uh, was able to show the teachers that there wasn't a whole lot they could do for me. And as a matter of fact, I actually t taught uh, networking to not only several of the teachers, but many of the students as well. We set up the first network in a high school, and we were the people that, that did it. Um, the jocks, uh, you know, being the typical A-type personality type people that they were, um, they would pick on us a little bit, but when they found out we actually had the passwords to the network and we can make sure uh, they passed their classes, uh, they didn't mess with us as much anymore. And there was a lot of uh, D's and F's that wound up changing to C's without really anybody finding out about it. Um, that being uh, what it was, when I got out of high school and I got into real life, I married my high school sweetheart, uh, it changed. It changed quite a bit. Um, it's funny that you were talking about uh, Aspie not being able to do sell, or at least you not being able to do a salesman job. Actually, one of the first jobs I had was salesman job, but it was a salesman at a computer uh, computer store, uh, and that was what we did. Was we did uh, uh, build computers. We did a lot of custom made, uh, but we had a lot of stock computers that we also sold. Uh, did a lot of networking type work. Um, I did most of the stuff uh, for the inventory, uh, made sure the inventory database was kept up because we did everything by database, um, kept track of all of our products and stuff by database. We did a lot of uh, uh, installations, uh, that was actually where the money was for us, uh, was going out and doing network installations. And it was a lot of fun, I did it for almost 10 years. Uh, was the vice president at one point. Uh, I, I never really took over the company, but um, I decided to go off and do something completely different for a while because I was uh, getting bored with it. I was getting really, really tired. Uh, this was the 90s. This was kind of when the Internet came into play. I learned how to program web pages. I learned how to do uh, the back page programming of all of the uh, server information and stuff and all that, working with um, mainly Apache software. And back to that, I you know it was it was back in the days of BBSing. It was you know being able to communicate with people non-verbally, and it was a uh, uh, very very comforting to me. I was it was when I had to do a salesman representative. It was very very be a salesman rep. It was very difficult for me. Uh, basically, I just sat down and said, "This is what we can do for you. Uh, this is what it's going to cost you." These are the components you want. These are the co components that you need. Uh, these are the components you really might want to spend the extra money just to have. Um, that was really it when it came to salesmanship, and that's really what the core of salesmanship is, really, is knowing your product. So saying that uh, you know, an Aspie can, can't really do uh, salesmanship is, is a little... It's a little uh, off, I think. I think if you can, if you know your product well, then you can do it well. If it, as long as it's not a high pressure sales tech, and I mean, I don't think uh, any one of us could uh, become a car salesman. Definitely not. Um, it's completely, you know, that you need that A type personality in there to do that type of work. But uh, if I did get that definition right, if I did were was able to uh, explain a little bit then pluses uh, if not uh, you know say I didn't do it and I'll make another video and we'll debate back and forth on pluses and minuses and pros and cons and we'll talk about that then uh, so this is once again the Doolittle signing out I'll see you later